Okay, so these are some of the 3D printed molds that I made a while ago um, for these carb scoops here. These are the molds for, the, you can see like the outside profile, and these are the, the core molds. Um, the problem is though, like on these ones, that the print's not very good. You can see it's pretty wavy throughout here, and they don't really sit flat against each other. So what I'll have to do is probably just sand these down. These ones though are a little bit more difficult because you can see they're kind of warped and they don't sit flat up against each other either. And I don't really want to sand away and, and take out material from here because I'm not going to have uh, the right dimensions. So first thing I'm going to do is try to try to flatten these. Maybe I can try to heat them up and clamp it down on a flat surface to see if that does anything. Okay, so I've let it cool down here now, and hopefully it stays flat after I take these off here. And I think that works pretty well. It's definitely a lot flatter than it was before. So I can probably like sand it a little bit, and that should work, I think. So I sanded the faces of the core patterns here a little bit too to get rid of that waviness. And then also for both of the patterns, I mixed up a little bit of Bondo here. And then I just spread this across the, the important parts of the patterns to cover up the, the layering that you see there from the 3D printer. Because those different layers that look like wood grain almost will definitely show up on the aluminum part if you don't cover that up like I'm doing now. And then once I spent some time sanding down the Bondo to give that a nice smooth surface, I finished it up with just a couple coats of some gloss spray paint here, and that just gives the final surface a nice smooth finish. So that then I could move on to making the casting flask here, and this is the pair of wooden frames that are going to hold together the, the green sand that I'll, I'll be casting these carb scoops into. So you can see these are the pieces of that flask here right now. I'm cutting these grooves into one side of them. That'll be the side facing the sand and those grooves just help it hold the casting sand in there a little bit better. And then I'll screw them all together into the two halves. So now that that's all ready, I'm ready to move on to the process of doing the actual casting. So you can see I've got one half of my pattern there that I laid down flat in one half of the flask here. And then I'm packing in this sand around it. And this is, this is casting green sand that I'm using here. This is just sand mixed with some clay and also a little bit of oil there. And that helps it pack in really nice and tightly. It creates a nice smooth finish around your pattern. Um, and it's pretty much that's the standard type of sand that people will use for doing um, this type of casting. And one of the features here that I included into this casting flask are these two removable pieces on each side. And what those let me do is it, it lets me pack in the patterns just like you saw me do, 
but then I can take those pieces off, remove the patterns, and then stand the mold up, up on its side so that I'll be pouring in the aluminum from what is the bottom of these carb scoops rather than you know, adding a separate um, runner tube and pouring the aluminum in from the side. I thought that this would give me a much more consistent um, even finish too because any air that has to vent out can very easily just vent right up the top as well, which is also through the bottom of the carb scoop. And I thought I'd get a much more um, consistent pour through this way. So we'll see if that works. So here I have the core patterns and I'm pretty much going through the same process with these as I went through with the first ones and using a little bit of baby powder there that just helps the sand release from the mold a little bit more easily. And I'm using the same green sand as I used previously for the core here as well. Most of the times when you're making a core like this, um, you'll make it out of silica sand that's mixed with a little bit of sodium silicate. And then once you have that all packed in, you actually flow some CO2 gas through that, which hardens the sodium silicate and turns that sand core into like a nice solid piece that's easily, easy to handle. Um, and then you can just set that in into your other mold and it's pretty easy. The heat from the aluminum will make it easy to break up afterwards. And I had planned to do it that same way. I ordered some sodium silicate to do this with, but that didn't arrive in time for when the rest of my setup here was, to, was ready to proceed with. So I figured I'd just make it out of the same green sand and see if I was able to keep it together. And you can see this first try here fell apart as I was trying to get it um, into the other mold there. And the second try here, I figured it might be a little easier to stand up the, the other pattern, and, but this one broke again while I was taking it out. And so for the third one, I made it the same way, but I actually included a little piece of wire on the inside of the core there to help try to keep it together. And I was just very gentle with it as I was trying to place it here into um, the, other, the other mold. And this time it actually uh, worked pretty well and stayed in one piece. So I was able to proceed with that luckily. So now that the mold is all together and ready to go, I'm finally ready to start melting down some aluminum here. And I've got this nice little forge here that I made a while ago with one of my friends for some small blacksmithing projects. But I also made this uh, little crucible for here that makes it nice for melting down small amounts of aluminum uh, just for things like this. And what I'm melting down here are some pieces, some cut up pieces from an old aluminum intake manifold that I got from a local junkyard. And what, whenever you're melting down aluminum like this, you wanna start with something that's already cast um, because not every alloy is good for casting. So if you start with something that's already cast and melt that back down, you know that you're starting with a good alloy. And that does have a very big impact on uh, how well it casts, how well it fills out your mold and the surface finish you get from it and things like that. All right, so here's the moment of truth. We'll see how it ended up turning out. I know it's not gonna be that great around the seams, but I'm hoping that at least filled out the, the whole cavity in there. So let's see. Oh, that looks pretty good. This looks really good. See, this side's definitely a lot cleaner than this side, but I'm pretty happy with that. All 
right, take two. See how this one turned out. Oh, not bad. See how the other side looks. Oh, it didn't fully fill out there as you can see. But the finish is much, much cleaner all around than the other one was. It's too bad there's some, some gaps right there. It looks like it got really thin and just didn't fill that out, unfortunately. But we'll try again. All right, so here's take three. I'm not really sure how this one's gonna be out. I don't think I was that consistent with the pour, uh, but we'll see here in a second. Oh, that side looks pretty good. Oh, this one actually looks really nice. clean it up a little bit, but I think this is the best one so far. Very nice clean finish and yeah, nice consistent cast there. That's that, I think that's my first like really good one that I'm going to that's that's definitely a keeper. All right, so this is the fourth and last one of the night here, so hopefully this is another good one. First side looks pretty darn good. I'll flip it over here. Oh, this one didn't quite fill out right here. There's a little bit of a void in it, unfortunately. Really nice finish on this one, though. Like this is really nice and smooth. It's a shame that it didn't didn't quite fill up here, though. So the following morning I made one more casting and that one I was also really happy with. So out of the five that I made in total, I had two that I was really ready to proceed with. And so here you can see I'm just cleaning up the, the seams on the, on the carb scoop here, just with a, a file and some sandpaper a little bit to even out the finish of it and just to take off any, any rough edges. And then I'll cut off most of the, the sprue there on the left. And for the finished machining here, you can see I made this custom fixture here, which is uh, two planks of wood that each have a, a semicircle cut into it and a few screws that clamp that wood down really tightly um, around the base of the carb scoop here. So you can see I have that set up in my mill and using the boring head, I could indicate it to the center of the, the carb scoop there and then just very gently take some passes on the inside there that clean up the internal diameter of the carb scoop so that it can fit onto the tops of the carburetors.
And so once I was finished machining the carb scoops there, I started to make a little bit of a screen to put on the inside of the scoops that would sit right on top of the carburetors. So this is a piece of some fairly coarse stainless steel mesh here that I'm just cutting out with an angle grinder. After I cut out this piece, I did a lot of fine tuning to get it to fit nice and snugly inside of the, the carb scoops. And then I also cut out a very thin piece of much finer uh, stainless steel mesh here. This has gaps in it of between one and two thousandths of an inch. Of course, it's not an air filter, but it'll keep out you know, any, any larger debris that, that gets sucked in. Okay, so now you can see here the mesh is pressed up very nice and tightly in there. Um, the, the fine mesh on top is nice and taut across the top of the, the more coarse mesh there. Um, so the last thing to do is I'm just going to put a little, I'm going to, you know, with this on place there, I'm going to put like a little set screw that goes in the back of the carb scoop here into this flange of the carburetor um, just to make sure that these aren't going to, you know, vibrate loose at any point. And I'll do that with these two as one piece. So I'll set these back in, line them up, and then to drill the hole, I'll take this, this top part of the carburetor off, drill it, tap it, and then put a little screw in. Of course, I don't want to drill it on here because then all the shavings and stuff would fall down into the intake, which would not be good. All right, well there we go, got the carb scoops mounted onto uh, the carburetors here. They fit on nice and tight, a little set screw for a little extra um, insurance there to keep them on. The screens inside of them are really tight in there as well, so that should, of course it's not as good as like an actual air filter or something like that, but you know, it'll keep out most debris. Um, and I think it just looks fantastic. Like that's the, exactly the type of look I was going for. Since I started this project, I've imagined it with carb scoops just like this. Um, and it worked out pretty well that the 2.4 liter Jag, um, this, which is the smallest version of this engine, is the only one that has these downdraft um, Solex carburetors on them. I know everyone loves the, the side draft Webers that the rest of them had, like the triple Webers on the side, but I was never really as big of a fan of those just for aesthetic purposes. Like I, I love the look of the carb scoops sitting on top here much more than the, the side trumpets that the, the Webers have. 
Um, but anyways, that's the, the carb scoops there. Really fun to finally get to work on these. So uh, thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.